Hi guys, I'm Blackie and welcome back to part two of the Silver Wolves class on the system. Okay, in the previous video, to quickly recap, we talked about generating the bullet points, the framework of how we're going to organize our gear to go camping. It's a way, like a mental exercise, to set it up, usually on paper, to have different components plug in. So, like I said, a bedroom, your hammock, your sleeping bag, your etc., crafts, saw hook or whatever, because that's what we're working on. The bathroom, washcloth, toothbrush, etc. It's a way of a checklist to organize your gear by a given system, a block, a room that you're going to plug the stuff into where it best suits to make sure you don't lose stuff, forget stuff, misplace stuff easily. Now let's take this and break it down even further because here in part two what we're going to talk about is it must be adaptable to the situation, to the weather, okay? Weather is a big determining factor because we have to go up or down in gear depending on what we're doing and what the weather is going to be. So for example, in the summertime, I can tote a, I can get away with just a haversack set and an extra tarp and a, a hammock for an overnight that I'm only gonna be out here really 24 hours and I'm actually only going to have to sleep one night. If the weather's not bad, the mosquitoes ain't bad, that's all I need. On the other hand, if it's the dead of winter and I need a big bulky sleeping bag, I need a big heavy um, uh, underquilt, I need big heavy clothing to put on, that type thing. So let's look at how we can break each one of these down even further. Now let's take and do this. Okay, let's take bathroom. Okay, under bathroom, we're gonna break it down into three separate things. One, personal hygiene. So, Lock one is going to be soap, cloth, and uh, let's say uh, deodorant. Okay? Now, in block two, we're going to go a little deeper than that. And this is things that might fit like, you know, tooth, teeth. Do you have dentures? We are silver wolves. And so you might need something like a container to soak your teeth or whatever. So following that line, you might need pads for your dentures, uh, toothpaste, brush, okay? Next, beyond this, we might need something a little more. Now, do we want to put the medicine chest separate or just put it with the bathroom stuff? That you'll have to decide for your system. I run them separate, but if you weren't, well then maybe you're going to put the aspirins, the upset tummy, the etc. in here. So I kind of want to do the thing about TP, toilet paper, and then I got tummy meds. Like for gas, for diarrhea, things like because I might get out here in the field and get a little bit of a tummy bug by something you ate, something you got that didn't agree with you. So I include it with that together, okay? Each of these components is broken down further. Uh, as far as, you know, from the bed heading, so from bathroom, I've got this, I've got that. Now how about, as well as soap, cloth, deodorant, how about wipes? Baby wipes are a great thing to carry in the field because with them I can just open up right quick, wash the dirt off my face, wash my hand off. In sweaty, heaty conditions, you can get your armpits growing, etc., and keep chafing to a minimum by getting that surplus salt off of you. I don't have to dig out uh, a washcloth 
and soap and water and a towel maybe, you know, because they'll have towels too, you know. Right there. I've got wipes that I can take care of this real quickly due to the severity. So this becomes a breakdown of bathroom. Okay? Now let's go look at food. That is the kitchen. Okay, in the kitchen, we're going to divide it into pots, pans, and food. Okay, we're going to start with the food before we go to pots, pans. Now, in section one is going to be the actual food that we're going to be using. We're going to have, let's say, uh, instant foods, MRE type, ready to eat stuff that all I got to do is heat it up. We're also going to have stuff that sweets and maybe bread, something like that, you know. These can have, very, and also dry, I forgot to put in here, dry things. That's the stuff that you're just going to add boiling water to or whatever. Now, each one of these, I'm going to select what it is I'm carrying on this trip. But let's break down what I need for the trip, okay? So... Let's take the Civil War's gathering that I'm about to do right now. Here's how to calculate what you're going to need for that in food. I am going out on the 4th, and I am going to be there until the 14th. In between, you've got 5 through 13. All right. Beginning to look like a math equation, ain't it? On the 4th, I'm going to eat breakfast heartily at home or en route. And when I get there, I will only need a lunch, a snack, and a dinner. So, a lunch, a snack, and a dinner. On the 14th, when I'm coming out from back there, I'm just going to eat breakfast in camp. So, it's just a breakfast. Lunch and dinner and snack, I won't because I'll be leaving around lunch coming out and I'll grab something on the way home, okay? I take that lunch, that breakfast, I add it here and these two kind of cross out and it becomes a full day's breakfast, lunch, and dinner right there. So that's one full day. Those two are going to equal one. Now, five, so we already got one. And then it's the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th. That's 10 meals, 10 days of these four meals. So I'm going to need 10 breakfasts, 10 lunches, 10 dinners, and 10 plus snacks. Okay? Right there. That simple working that out, okay, of knowing how many. So underneath kitchen when it gets to food, I'm going to have a heading of how many breakfasts, how many lunches, how many dinners, how many snacks total for my time in the field. Okay? It doesn't have to be anything complicated. Okay. For breakfast, something like oatmeal. But I'm not going to just take 10, 10 of these. I may love them, but that's going to get a little old. So vary it a little bit. So I'll have instant cereal like this. Now this one requires milk. But if you go look where these are sold, like in Walmart or whatever, they have some that's called Instabolt. It's the same thing, but it's got powdered milk in it. All you got to do is add water to it and stir it up. And you've got cereal without having to tote milk, see. And so that could be a real advantage. From these varieties, 
I'm going to come up with how many of whatevers, but have at least, you want at least five varieties. So 10 days, two, 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 whatever. But have five or six varieties there. So you don't get bored. Some people can get up every morning and eat exactly the same thing and never have an issue. That's great. Me personally, I like to carry tang with me because of it being concentrated orange juice, high vitamin C, etc. So I will alternate. I will have tang with breakfast, and then the next day I'll have tang with lunch or tang with supper as a beverage. See, I can break it up. Instant beverages, a couple of different kinds that I can just add water to and have something that tastes good but isn't the same thing all the way. Plus, if I'm going to be out here 10 days drinking just straight water is going to get old. Coffee, etc. Coffee, hot chocolate. Plan out your meals. Now, another way that works really good for this when we get up to 10 suppers, excuse me, 10 dinners right here is to plan the meal, always plan your meals ahead. Now, for example, this is a can of roast beef, like you get off the shelf. I like to save these old vitamin bottles, okay? I can take this vitamin bottle and fill it full, make sure it's clean, of course, fill it full of instant rice and combine these. All I gotta do is take a small bush pot or canteen cup Dump the rice in, let it boil happily for five, 10 minutes, whatever it is for it to be done. When the rice is done, I will drain the water out and I will open up and dump the can of roast beef in with it, stir it up, all the juice in here and everything else, and let it warm up another five minutes. And I have a meal. Now with that same thing, I can take different measurements of instant potatoes, instant grits, instant rice dishes, lasagnas, pastas, etc., and carry to the field and make 10 different meals without having to carry a whole lot. Instead of carrying a whole box, carry a pre-measured. Put it in a Ziploc bag if nothing else. Squeeze all the air out of them and then tape them together. Put them into something. But their way, I know these two go together, right? But you organize your meals. Plan out your whole menu for the week, okay? Don't forget the snacks. Notice I said 10 plus right there. Because when you're bored or you're just, you know, I feel like not being on my diet, have that cookie. Have those little Hershey's Kisses, those saltine crackers, whatever it is. Something to make it enjoyable, give you a little energy etc. By having it this way, it makes it simple. I go ahead and plot out what I got so I know what I got. Now, those of you that's got a lot of camping experience, you're going to know exactly what I'm about to say. How many times have you gone on a camping trip and brought three quarters of the food back? You just didn't get hungry. That happens. I plan out my meals and have everything set. Over time, you will learn your personal things. We often eat just because the clock says it's time to eat. We may not actually be hungry. And if we're involved with talking with friends or doing a craft or whatever, we may actually skip a meal or two while we're out there because we're having fun. We're not paying attention to the clock, see? And so you may learn over time I don't need quite as much as I thought I did, see? And you may actually scale that back a little. But this type system will teach you that. It'll teach you how to plug in the components you need and only the components you need, okay? Now let's shift back up to the bedroom. Because we have to take into account in this system season slash weather. Okay? So, in the bedroom.
what temps am I going to be facing? Okay, it's the winter. That means I need the big sleeping bag. So I need the big bag because I ain't going to be cold. Okay? It also means that I'm going to need to add in my closet down here, because now these two go together, closet. I'm going to need big coat. Big socks. You know, uh, long underwear. I'm going to need to counter with this because now I'm, I'm not sleeping in my PJs. I'm probably going to be sleeping in all my long hammers. I'm going to just keep them on and you know pull a toboggan on, make sure that what's against my skin is dry. I may rotate them around to make sure I'm dry up against my skin before I get into my sleeping bag. It's dead of winter. It's cold. So I'm going to need the big bag. What else am I going to need that's special with that? Well, maybe there's something that goes along with the, the, the tent. You know, something that enclosed. Maybe I want to take a tent rather than the hammock. See, if I'm doing my hammock, I may need an extra underquilt that gets included. We plug in each one of them. I may need more food, more coffee, trying to stay warm. Okay. The season will dictate how the gear closet, the crafts, all that change. It must be adaptable to what I'm actually doing in the season of it. Flip it, it's a dead of summer. Man, it is sweltering hot. Well, I don't need the big sleeping bag now. I can get away with just a poncho liner or a wooby. I don't need all of these big heavy clothes. I can bring like one change But I do want swim trunks. Cause when it gets too hot, we're gonna go sit in the creek. A good friend of mine um, on his land during the summer, when it got to be hot, we would literally take our chairs and go down and just sit in the creek. It was rock bottom, it was crystal clear, and we'd just go out and sit so it was about this deep in the water and be sitting here talking, you know, in the current. It was cool, it was enjoyable. We didn't have to worry about gators or snakes. So therefore, it was enjoyable. But swim trunks would be very useful for this. See, you have to be able to adapt to it. Now once I have generated, okay, I have generated my entire list now I select how I'm going to transport that list out there. If it is the summertime, I can scale everything back down small and light, right? Why am I toting this big 45 liter backpack when everything I need will fit in a small rucksack? Or how about in a five gallon bucket or a tote? If we're silver wolfing it, we're coming in on a truck, we're just going to set up camp and walk down the lake. We're not hiking in. On the other hand, if I am hiking, I can get away from the big bag and I can go to the small bag. The gear needs to adjust as well. So I do need a big bag for use in the winter and I need a smaller bag for use during the summer because the surest way to regret is to take a big empty sleep, a uh, big empty backpack, and you'll put what you really need in it, and it's three quarters of the way empty. You know what you're going to do. Guilty. You'll say, "Well, it's be nice, and that'd be nice, and this be nice," and you fill that bag up. You hate an empty bag. By creating our list, going to our system. Being honest with yourself on what I really need. Is this a want or a need? Well, I'd really like to bring this with me because I want to play with it while we're out there. 
absolutely. I really want to bring my binoculars because I want to try some uh, sighting on birds on the far side of the lake. There's supposed to be an eagle over there. I want to see if I can get a good look at it. Absolutely. I want to bring my camera along. Absolutely. On the other hand, if I don't have any of these activities planned, why am I bringing that gear? Well, I might. I might is a lousy idea. I might is, a, is the first name of Murphy. <laughs> Murphy is on every assembly line, every plan. Old Murphy is going to get in your way. Murphy's Law. And so I might is Murphy's first name. It always causes trouble. We have created a system of listing our needs. Now we have got that list. Now we're going to choose how to carry it to the field by the way we're getting there. Are we canoeing? Well, I may need dry bags, something I can seal up. So it's A, flotation, and B, should I flip over, it floats, right? And I can leave it tied to the canoe so it floats or tied to my kayak. I'm biking in. I know, okay, I need something that's kind of narrow then. I don't want to make something really wide and try to go down this narrow trail. I'm going to be hitting bushes and stuff, and it's either going to be tearing up my gear or it might throw me off the trail. See? We're driving in on the car. Okay. I want to make it organized where it's easy for my camp. So let's say I'm using plastic tubs like we talked about. My kitchen is in this tub. When I'm when the stuff is taken out of it, this tub becomes a work area for me to process food. See, it doesn't have to be strictly a box. It can be flipped upside down and serve as a pseudo table. My bedroom, the way I carry my bedroom to the field right now, is I've got this 30 gallon barrel that's got a lid that comes down on it and it locks in place. It's rainproof, waterproof. So all of my bedroom goes in there. My tarp, my everything goes in there. I have enough room that if I want a, a little, I'll put my closet in the bottom of that barrel. Let me show you a rough idea of what I'm doing. Okay, I have that 30 gallon barrel. It originally had uh, pickles in it, I believe. In the very bottom of the barrel is where my closet goes. Because I don't need them till I get there and I'll be changing in and out of them, right? On top of my closet goes my kitchen. Because once I get there, I'm going to unpack it, right? On top of my kitchen goes my uh, bedroom. So up here at the top is going to be the tarp, first thing out, hammock, then it's going to be my lantern right here I talked about, my under quilt to go into it, and finally my top quilt right there. When I pull all of them out, everything's empty except for the kitchen and the closet. See? So that one item I pull out, it's got two great big old handles on it, and I can pull it right out of the back of the truck and walk it over and set it up wherever it is I'm about to do. Set up my hammock, pull it out, pull the lid off and pull it straight out. One, two, three, four, five, all the way through. Since this barrel is bug proof, critter proof, coon proof, when I lock that lid back on, I can sit on that barrel I can use the top of it as a little table if I want to. The lid comes off and can serve as a tray. My clothes are down here in the bottom. If I need to change clothes or whatever, right there. A lot of times down here next, uh, beside my closet, that's where my bathroom goes. That's all my hygiene and etc. stuff down there. I simply push the clothes to this side and put them beside them down there. So I know where my stuff is, right? Now if I'm doing a rucksack, because we're hiking in or whatever, I will load my rucksack in a similar mindset. 
set up so I know where it's at in my pack by where I put it. Where's that room? Well, that's in the bottom floor. I think of it like floors then. So the top floor is going to be my bedroom. And then what comes under this? It's least need goes to the bottom. I can get to it if I need to, right? Most common needs on the top. I don't want to have to dig all the way to the bottom of that five gallon bucket, that tub or whatever, to find the component, unless it's something like medicine. You know, medicine chest to be down there with my uh, bedroom kit, I mean, excuse me, bathroom kit in the very bottom. I can get to them because once my camp is set up, three quarters of that barrel is empty. It's easy to get to. Same thing when I pull my food out and everything else out of that barrel, that tub, that bucket, that rucksack, or whatever. I get done, I'm going to put it back. It goes back in there. So my camp kind of stays packed. You see what I'm saying? It isn't spread out a great deal. We think because of being home, you know, well, you walk in the bathroom and all the wives, cosmetics, and everything else has got the entire counter space, and you got a space about that big for you to get up there and shave. When we get to the field, we think we're supposed to spread out, and we're supposed to have everything set up all over the camp. I don't. In my system, I keep my stuff in a central area and kind of still packed. I organize it by my headings that we talked about, and then I put my bedroom, my whatever, in position so that I can pull it out and utilize it in a fluid, easy motion without scattering it. At the same time, if in the middle of the night I wake up and I've got an upset tummy or whatever, where's your tummy meds? Well, the tummy meds or with the bathroom stuff. Where's the bathroom stuff? Bottom right side of the barrel. Take the lid off. In the dark, reach all the way to the bottom. It'll be on the right. What's to the left of it? That's going to be my closet and extra clothes and stuff. I can find it in the dark. That is such an advantage. Now when I go to break down camp, what am I going to do? Well, Okay, I get up and I'm going to change back into my clothes I'm going home with. Where do my dirty clothes and the clothes I slept in last night? They go into the closet. I grab my bathroom kit, I brush my teeth, take the wipes and I wipe up and I get cleaned up because I'm going home, right? Then it goes back into position. What's next? I'm going to eat my breakfast. When I get done with breakfast, the kitchen goes back and whatever other food goes back into that. Okay, now what we're doing? Well, now we're breaking camp. So down comes first the under quilt. That goes there. My pillow gets tucked over here. Then comes down my top quilt. Then comes in uh, my lantern. Then comes in the actual hammock. And the last thing that goes on top is going to be the tarp with the tent stakes right there on top. And I put the lid on the barrel. And I'm ready to come home. One, two, three, four, five. This is a system. The system makes your life easy. Now, in the next video, we're going to talk about storage at home and how you set up like a library of storage so that you come in and go, okay, it's this season we need to change to, and I'll show you all my components are lined up in a way that I go one, two, three, four, five, six, Stock my barrel, stock my tub, stock my rucksack, stock my backpack, whatever, in a fluid motion and go out the door. When I come home, it goes back into that system the same way. And I'll show you that in part three. Hope you've enjoyed this discussion, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this class. And I will be posting the next one this Sunday. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.